Well, I've, I've started recording anyway, so we'll just do like um, an introduction. So um, welcome, everybody. Um, this is basically, so I've obviously done those two documentaries before with quite a lot of prominent clips about uh, Stephen Anderson and get a lot of complaints from a few handful of people about like why he included him and stuff like that. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that's come out between like his kids that have left home and coming against him and saying this stuff about him, and then he's saying that it never happened, and there's a lot of that going on. So a lot of people will be a bit curious, and all the internet is like going crazy about this. So uh, this video wasn't my idea. It's, it's Brother James's idea, so uh, he's basically just going to mostly talk with very little input from me apart from the odd comment. Uh, just a reminder to people for the James 2 documentary, still waiting for more submissions on script, so if you want to see it happen, get involved. But a big thank you to the people that have already got involved, especially the Colonel Vlogs who sent me like a bunch of material, which is great. <laughs> so, um, over to you, James. Yeah, yeah, no problem. What I'm going to start with, everybody, uh, I'm just going to read this scripture out first. It's not going to be too many scriptures today, but what I'm going to do is if everybody's got the Bible, we'll go to Ezekiel 34, um, 9, we'll start with. I'm aiming at 10, but we'll go from 9. Uh, actually, sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll go from we'll go all the way up from 7. Sorry about that. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord, Surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for the flock. This is the bit we're dialing in on. But the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. And here it is. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds and I will require my flock at their hand and he is the key bit and calls them to cease from feeding the flock. Okay, so I'll just put my Bible down there. So that key bit on the end there, cease from feeding the flock. And now to me, this is a fruition and manifestation of everything that's happened. Um, but what I want to do before I get inject some of my thoughts on this is um, I just want to give a... a you know, because we're meant to be peaceable and amenable with all men. Bit of irony with what's going on over there, right? But we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, what I want to say is, like I say, is, is, is um, encouragement for people because there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be confused. And I see already in a lot of the comments on different uh, pages. And obviously, I'm friends still with a lot of these people directly and indirectly. And there's a lot of people quick to bash the people who were saying, you know, he, he's such a wonderful guy and this and that. Firstly, I'll say is this, unless you attend his church and actually physically go there, what I've learned more than anything uh, and getting to know all these pastors around the world and everything, how could I say this? A pastor is not to be put on the pedestal. Oh yes, obviously the Bible re references great men of God. However, um, I believe the timeline we're in, uh, that's weighing down some. So that's just my own personal opinion, of course. Do what you will of that. But what I will say is this, is a pastor is meant to be of good uh, rapport. They're not meant to be a striker, a brawler, and so on and so on. Now people will say, well, Stephen Anderson's never punched no one or whatever. Well, not that I know of. Um, now, there are lots of stories out there and so on and so on. And again, I try not to go on anything that's unfounded. Uh, but obviously, having been one of the, I think, two, uh, one of the very few English people that, uh, by birth, obviously, uh, that's been able to preach from an IFB pulpit and so on and so on. And and, and have obviously, as you all know, have um, known the people and, and so on and so on. Obviously, I've got somewhat of a, I hope, a valued opinion. Um, but again, let's just go back to that point about being of not good rapport. The 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 encouragement factor is this. Um, people attacking other people online by saying, oh, well, look at this. Idiots defend them. Okay, I kind of feel that way about certain things, but, but not everybody is going to have personally attended the church. And again, I know everybody's not going to know who is an actual pew member or whatever, but all I'm saying is that's just an important point to remember. Um, and uh, I think that, like, um, thank the Lord that 
we had a soul winning revival. That's the first thing I'm going to say uh, with the Andersonite movement because it reaffirmed my salvation. You know, because as, as as a lot of you know, and for those of you who don't know, I spent many years in a charismaniac or charismatic church. That you know, you can see in previous videos around a lot of these things. So again, it, it's more of a quick video, so I'm not going to touch on a lot of that stuff. But what I'm getting at is, you know, there's 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 there's, there's a lot of things going on, but I will say um, I'm not surprised that these things have happened. But again, I'm so thankful um, that, that you know, God used Stephen Anderson. Now, whether people think he's saved or not is another matter. But what I want to touch on in, 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 in just a quick summary of what's going to be coming up in this video is a large part. I don't know if it's going to be a separate video, but we are going to do an overview kind of of the I, uh, the NIFB. But one of the key components of this is the false reprobate doctrine, which I've talked on before. Now, there are certain pastors, friends who, who were in the quote unquote Anderson I camp for a while, who are now openly saying things like, you know, this is reprobate behavior and quote Matthew 8 and everything. Now, I haven't had the opportunity to speak to these other pastors behind closed scenes yet um, about this before I make my final analysis. But all I would say is this is this false doctrine is permeated so much that even these other pastors who are calling out Stephen Anderson and calling it reprobate behavior and this, that and the other. The only reason they know about a reprobate doctrine is because Stephen Anderson full circle, taught them this in the first place. So, you know, for anybody who's confused or doesn't understand this or is new to Christianity, the Bible says in Mark 3, all sins are forgiven, okay? And if anybody wants to go back to my preach uh, from Florida about four months ago, it's, it's on, obviously it's on the channel. You know, um, I said in that video, I was speaking about the two malefactors and I, I made it a joke, but I was obviously being serious at the same time that like a lot of these people, especially out the Andersonite movement or NIFB movement, they'll say, well, a reprobate has done this set of sins or whatever. Now, isn't it interesting that a lot of these people generally get uh, found out for those same sins and so on and so on. And we're not just talking about sexual sins, but... What I'm getting at is what I said in that video was, you know, we have the world, which is this cross here, and this world, uh, and this cross is the person who believed on the Lord, right? It couldn't go nowhere. He couldn't repent of all these sins. Obviously, they, none of us can. He's staying there, so it's believe only, right? Out the circumcision of the heart, confession is made under salvation, right? But what I said in that video was, could, well, can somebody tell me whether the fourth cross is for the people who have sinned too much? And this is the Andersonite mode way of thinking that, hey, we, we, we'll we abstain from that because, you know, that's that's not us. We don't do those sins or whatever, blah, 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 blah. Now, here's the thing. The Bible says in uh, 1 John, I think it's one eighteen. it says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now, my personal thoughts at this stage are the girl has gone to her uncle for solace and help and everything now i'll be the first person to apologize as people who will tell you if i'm wrong about something i'll be the first person to apologize about that but i don't think that's so uh my instinct is she's gone there you know the young man who who um is obviously lost who who's done the video and, and helped these out god like all of us, use a crooked stick to help people. You know, let's go, and the irony of let's go back to Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short the glory of God. Ecclesiastes 7.20, there's not a just man upon the earth that does good and sin that not. You know, God's used this person to to to, to do this and, and I think help enlighten some believers and hopefully, you know, the Holy Spirit is going to teach people. Because remember, no man may, may need to teach you. You make up your own mind. You know, I know some people who've read the Bible tens and scores of times. And, you know, there's a reason why these people don't go to church. Now, people say, well, you know, where two or more are gathered in my name. And, you know, the whole physical biddle issue, you know, versus the whole coffee clutch issue, whatever. All I'm simply saying is... 
when it comes down to human level, um, obviously certain people are not going to go for these exact reasons. And, and, you know, again, another time I can go into what I think is right and wrong around this. All I'm just saying is on a, on a surface level of humanity is there's a reason when we see all these things come to pass. Now, look at all the wars and contentions and strife that has come to pass. Now, to name the names like Phygelus and Hermogenes, all I will say is this. For me, and again, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty confident Jonathan Shelley's unsaved. Um, and I say that with, if we were going to go, and again, anybody who knows me knows I'm not into Lordship Salvation and so on. But when we check the fruit of the spirit by, your, you know, we'll know what people are going to say. Like, it just seems to be a pattern of over and over and over again, these things. And whereas, again, I'm very careful not to sound like Lordship Salvation. But when we're particularly talking from a pastoral point of view, um, if we see like what Jeff, the unsaved Jeff Dollar Calvinist did and made videos exposing Jonathan Shelley of the embezzlement and buying himself a church and that dumb video he did of I'm bestowing a gift upon myself and all these things to beat his one-year-old and then his three-year-old and so on and so on and so on. You know, and all church members who have confessed this, this is my own opinion and speaking with these people, sorry, listen to these people and so on and so on and so on. Like, it does make you wonder. Now then, again, if I'm wrong about that, I'll be the first to apologise, you know. Well, um, just like, because every time you say, say on one of these videos we do, someone's unsafe, it gets me in trouble in the comments. So, like, yeah. how would you qualify that, though? Because people are going to want you to qualify. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what I'm getting at is no fault of people saying... Yeah, yeah, if people saying the whole IFB movement and all these pastors are unsaved, well, if we look at again, without giving too much detail away, obviously in the upcoming video or whatever, is like ever since day one, there's been internal fighting, or not just like a this level, like a, a macro level. It's not a micro level, is it? We've we've had uh, people turning up at people's houses and a lot of the audience are not going to know this for physical fights. Uh, again, we've had embezzlement. We've had um, now the rumours of, of, of people... Uh, you know, with Susanna Anderson and so there's a lot of stuff we could go at, but what I'm getting at is a holistic approach to look, if this was born out of somebody who was unsaved, then potentially it could be this or, or it's because it wasn't um, born of God and it was born of opinion, whether that person saved or not, look at the people that it's attracted and all the strife and everything. That's what I'm getting at, you know, and if this is constantly an issue of, um, you know, people robbing their own flock and so on and so on, then, then there's a potential, obviously, for, for that person to be spiritually reprobate. Um, and again, like I say, that, that, that's just my opinion. Um, and like I say, we, you know, um, we try and forgive our enemies. You know, I, I think I always give uh, uh, anybody who knows me, I always try and give, a, 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 I want to see the best in people. I always want to give people the benefit of the doubt. And yeah, uh, that, that's my opinion on that. Um, but uh, what I want to say as well is, as we get towards the end of this uh, sort of disclosure at the moment is, I think don't be shocked to see a lot more things come out I'm absolutely confident people will see those people who are watching. You're going to see a, a lot more things come out down the pike. Um, and I just encourage people to uh, be of sound mind about it and um, obviously seek strength in the Lord and, and stay in your Bible on this and so on. Um, because obviously it's going to touch a lot of people who have not been exposed to the NIFB. You know, um, obviously, I, and I can hear all the people who are saying, why haven't you mentioned Donny Romero? And, you know, when he was sleeping with prostitutes and taking the tie and everything, you know, folks, this is just this on the whole. Uh, we'll be here for hours. We're, ju we're just making a, a quick video tonight. Um, and, 
Yeah. Um, so, yeah, is there anything you you want to ask me else again while I'm here? Well, I guess there's a, a, a few uh, sure. things we could yeah. ask. So, I mean, this one's more of a comment for the audience than, um, mm-hmm. like, a, a question for James. But, like, because this thing that, like, the, the reprobate in Romans 1 is, a, like, a special kind of sinner. Uh, a few people have asked me about this. I've just never really got round to doing a video on it. But, like, it says, right, that the just shall live by faith, it ends verse 17, for the wrath of God is revealed against heaven, against all ungodliness and unrighteousness, not, not just some ungodliness. <laughs> yeah. And what the NIFB do, they, they kind of take this and make it like a special category of sinner. So you've got like saved people, general sinners, and then reprobates like a, a subcategory. But then they say that Romans 1 is like about these, and then it's about these, and then we just completely ignore these. But when you go into like Romans 2 and he starts to say, you know, you judge other people when you do the same stuff and we're all guilty. Mm-hmm. Roman, I think when you look at that holistically in the way that he's contrasting the two, it's clear that a reprobate is more generalistic than that. People who reject God are reprobate. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, there, there are people that hate God a lot more than a lot of sodomites do, but they're not a sodomite, right? There are, you know, people that are sodomite that, that don't necessarily have that same contempt. It, it is more nuanced than that. And that, that's why... I disagree with the NIFB on that. I know, like a lot of people in the free grace camps, tend to say that it's like it's backloading works, or because they have a hang up either about the reprobate doctrine or the confession issue. Yeah. But really, it's like, well, it's what does the Bible say? And I just think it's it's a dishonest kind of assessment of of Romans one, which is why I say yeah. to the reprobate doctrine. Um, yeah. Well, so, Romans one, just for anybody as well, I'll just add on that again. Romans one is just a general sin list. Right, we'd all agree with that, those of us who know it. It's just a general sin list, and you can't just pick and choose, well, this sin and that sin, because if if we were just talking about a certain sexual sin, well, all thieves and all liars w- would be would be in this category as well. It's absolutely ludicrous that qualified pastors who, who know the word of God are still perpetrating this junk and uh, potentially shutting the windows up of heaven for people, and it vexes my spirit when I hear it. Um, because it is a modern teaching. It came out in the 80s, you know, uh, out the out the Jack Hiles and all the controversy there where Anderson got his idea, a lot of his ideology from. But again, I don't want to go too much off shoot because we'll touch on that uh, in the comprehension of the, the full IFB thing when we get to it. Okay, so um, you, you said that, like, you use this mm-hmm. kind of phrase that like that that's so obviously all, all three that have come out against him publicly yeah um, i think isaac john and miriam they, yes. they obviously all went to basically a transvestite right to share their story so obviously in anderson's preach that, that i just saw on youtube today like you know he's obviously that's going to feed into the if if, if, they're, if we're arguing that the children are correct so well surely that's only feeding the narrative that why you would knowing knowing when you've grown up in yeah. steven's household why the frig would you even go to a transvestite to share your story? Like, they could have asked anybody, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's just very odd. And this same person has, like, satanic symbols on his... Well, well just tying like, that together, and, and so to give the audience an understanding of how ludicrous the reprobate doctrine is, tying, coming away from that, but tying in the point you just made and binding them two things together. The Bible says that, obviously, I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, but just for, for, for time, I'm going to say it this way. You know, there's a scripture that essentially says that um, saved people did things that even made the heathen blush. Okay. And the Bible says, as such was some of you. Now, it's convenient that when they talk about all these things, they don't mention those scriptures, which is the very place we should go to because it's God is saying that, hey, you saved people, you people of God, are doing more worse things than the heathen. You're making them blush you as such for you right so when we say oh we wouldn't do that or people are doing this much sit no it's 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 ludicrous to say that and um that's shown the contempt all around and i think that comes the age-old sin of pride but the problem you've got is when you are um potentially backloading works or sorry indirect lordship salvation to say a certain class of sinners can't be saved I encourage those people to repent of that and, and and turn from that because obviously in God's eyes, that's shutting the windows of heaven up for people. And, you know, I'll, I'll reaffirm the point that like what a particular pastor said online the other day comes to something when, 
You've got somebody who's shown in open sin. I mean, bear in mind, we all have secret sins, but open sin from somebody who has a better moral compass than Stephen Anderson, you know, and that's the level we're dealing with at the moment. And again, all of this shouldn't have been public anyway. Like, let me make that point. I forgot to say that at the start. And if what you need to understand, there's a lot of con men in the IFB. There's a lot of problems. There's been embezzlement. There's lots of things. And there are a lot of people behind the scenes who don't want to, who, who, who like me, and gobby like me, are not going to say it. Um, they, they feel the same way. And, and that's coming from a wise counsel of God and wise men of God who have been around, again, personally, these people, or have been in other churches like that for a long time. So, you know, this isn't just me sort of giving my opinion. Um, yes, I'd like to think, obviously, given the fact I've been in this movement for a while and so on, to have a validated opinion. But I also want to reinforce people to say, hey, I try and have wise counsel with other people, and you know, and... Um, not to take a hammer to a wall, not every time, but we have to try and be candid and frank about how we speak as well. And yes, where we can, we hold our waters. But obviously, I know this is quite a big deal for a lot of people, which is why I felt encouraged and wanted to encourage other people and get some thoughts around it, you see. So this is, and again, we were coming up to do the an IFB kind of video anyway. It was one that was long past due anyway. Um, so... So, yeah. I think it's just because a lot of people in the NIFB, right, if, if they're looking at this whole picture, like, they will have watched Stephen's sermon where he's given a list of, like, reasons why his children were wrong to speak against yeah. him. And the first thing on his list is, well, number one, they went to a Satan-worshipping cross-dresser to express their, like, and he said that really should, you know, he doesn't even need to preach the rest of the sermon. He's just like, he said, right, we could go home right there. And they're, they're going to listen to that. Well, they're not even going to hear the children's mm -hmm. matter then. So, like, like, well, what would you say to that? I'd say, well, with anybody with a brain is gonna <laughs> is gonna yeah. work out that, like, well, let, sorry, yeah. let me say it this way. I mean, don't so get me I wrong, saw, I didn't like, you know, I don't want to. Yeah, look of at course. It, but, you know, I, I saw a comment that to it Stephen, I believe, it yeah, was Stephen who put it. this. <laughs> well, I'm not doing the Freemason thing, by the way. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Please don't pause it. I'm not doing yeah, this. Yeah. yeah just, um, so I believe, I can't remember hours ago, the timeline that synced with obviously being in Arizona, but earlier on today, I think it, I think it was Stephen who put this on his own page, on the Faithful World Baptist page, and said, um, basically, the Bible doesn't speak about, and this is in the context of throwing chairs at his wife, and, and the, the, the guy who's done the video has shown evidence throughout the years of the where Marion's backed it up with the chairs break, and pardon me in the video and everything so we totally know that's the score okay but what what like i say what i'm what i'm getting at is that like one of the comments is on there and they've asked him something around whatever he said and he basically then said well the bible doesn't say a lot about beating your wife but it doesn't say not to beat your wife and i'm like Oh, that's like that's like when you corner a dispensationalist or a Calvinist and they try and go, huh, well, it's not saying this, but it doesn't say that neither. And it's like, oh, no. Well, it doesn't like, strictly say don't kick somebody in the balls. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's that it smacks of that kind of like contempt of like rather than just saying, look, I have a choice here. I was wrong. I need to step down. You know, um, or or if you're going to stay on, just be quiet. Don't publicly put it out there. If people are going to make videos about you, you know, make a quick summary, whatever. But but what you'll see with a pattern with IFB, they like to drag it on and on and on. And you see some guy with a brain in the comments saying, "Hey, so what are you saying is is that like because it doesn't say that, but does say that, but doesn't say that." What's your position on it? And it's just going round in a circle. Um, so it's that's an example of where maybe it is best just to hold your waters on a on a certain situation. Yeah, I mean, I guess like a lot of people be so there'll just be some people watching this right and thinking, well, they they don't necessarily know who or what to believe. Oh yes, and again, think, apologies like, for the depth of this because yeah. it's far and wide, and, right? And this, I mean, this is like you know, I'm not a father. I'm in no position to 
see whether he did a good job. And things are, I'm thousands of miles away. I don't really care. It doesn't affect me for a start. Yes. But like, you know, I don't know what was going on in his house, right? So, like, you know, I'm not a father. I'm not a church pastor. I don't meet those requirements. And from the NIFB point of view, probably even a lousy husband, really. But like, so, you know, I can't comment on whether they beat too hard or, or not enough. I think it's just the only thing that I find very odd about this is that like there, there is a bit of a conveyor belt going on mm-hmm. where every time somebody has had the opportunity to leave the house, yes, they've then completely departed from the family, from the, the impression that I'm getting, like completely cut off either that way or that way, whichever way you yeah. slice it. I think the firstborn has cut them off, right? But he's been private, so he hasn't really come out and said anything public. But there's a big thing as to whether that he's going to come out and say something. But like, I couldn't, maybe, understand, I couldn't understand like <laughs> yeah. one teenager, you know, making up a bunch of stuff, and you know, teenagers do lie or they exaggerate and stuff like that. But but let's not despise that youth. But well. like when like it's very unusual for four of your children, like every single time they yeah. leave all consecutively, yeah. to all come against you and all want to publicly destroy your reputation now i'm not a public figure i'm not you know well known like he is so you know maybe it it wouldn't happen to me for that reason it's a different dynamic because he is almost like a celebrity in a manner of speaking but you know when he's given all the preaching about you know they shall not depart from it you know if you train up the child the way they should go like it's that is a bit unusual for teenagers to just run away from home and then try and completely destroy your reputation because i don't know if it was the same for you for me and probably most people I knew, if there was any animosity between teenagers and parents, it ended as soon as we moved out. You know, it didn't continue, and I think that's what what I find yeah, very exactly. odd about it. So even if yeah. some of what they're saying is not true, there's still that's still very odd in of itself. And like some of us, like if I was to try and tell porky pies, right, people tend to know if I was lying, like my nose would flare up and stuff like that. It's very difficult for me to like say something that's not true, <laughs> look you straight and just like keep face. Like I find it yeah. very difficult, right? So unless they really believe that what they're saying is true, but then yeah. the other person has exactly the same. And this is the thing, like biblical law is always really messy, right? Because there's always two sides to the same story. And that's why you have these like scriptures about going to the church and getting all the witnesses and, and you know, et cetera, Yeah, et cetera, you have two or three more witnesses. Because there, there's yeah. always <laughs> differing opinions on the exact same thing. That, that mm. It's very rare that something is just, well, they're right and they're wrong and it's that black and white. It's always more complicated yeah i mean i mean like again just to go back to anybody with half a brain it and again I, i'm obviously we're, i'm very conscious of the fact there are a lot of people who won't know about this a lot will but for the people who particularly don't know as well that like and if we go along the conveyor process conveyor belt process should i say there has been so much scandal and so much testimony from people coming out of a lot of these things um that if it was a court case that it's it's a slam dunker it's an absolute slam dunker you know and so i have no doubts the vast majority of what's happened has all been true now thank god that we serve a forgiven god you know um and that there's reconciliation that needs to be done but I think this might be the punishment and God chastising, like how we've all been maybe chastised in some way. It's, I always like to include myself for, for doing something wrong. But when I see this particular angle, that like, yes, I'm not a pastor, obviously, but obviously I've got a qualified opinion. When I've seen it, like, firsthand, particularly, um, it's not good because obviously, you know, the the flock of, like it says the flock are meant to be fed that you know and it's the ultimate privileged position in life to be a pastor and so to have open scandal consecutively 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 you know like it's wrong and it so what but what grieves me is when you get like bozos and unsaved genuine spiritual reprobates who believe in works who haven't believed the account that God gave them, like your Andrew Sluders of the world, and so on and so on. Um, Anybody who believes in hardcore works, I'm sure they're at home laughing, going, ha-ha, look at this, 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 They're having a great time. 
uh, they're having a great time and and i feel so sad because some people not because they're enjoying that because i wouldn't want to look like a giant looking jelly baby but what what i'm thinking of is that like sorry about the ad hominem folks but you need to see the picture but what i'm getting at is that like those um people who are maybe on the fence about like oh well who is right about the faith alone with anderson and the works with sluder and these people are unstable choose that because they all they see is this outward nonsense going on and go wow we we don't want to be part of them because obviously that's god's one about how we interact and they're around people you know and they'll, mis- so they'll, they'll misappropriate the whole you yeah. know, good tree good fruit kind of thing well look at all the fruit there all these terrible works and so on and so on yeah <laughs> exactly look at the way these people are behaving yeah. they're making me blush Right. But it's like have these people read the Old Testament like, you know, David, Solomon, Samson, like right. literally every major character in the Bible yeah. with complete dearth. <laughs> so on the personal level, that grieves me because of the seriousness of like that could sway somebody to be, you know, at worst getting unsaved because they go to a slew to church or whatever. At you know, at best they get saved, but then go to a student church because they're, they're not going to be in amongst all of that kind of thing. You've been looking at some Sluder stuff today, haven't you? <laughs> You've really got it I don't know why you say it. I think it's just the... Like if any the, of the work towns you've picked. Um, cool. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, the thing is with, like, the documentaries right, that I did, it's like, I'm not remaking them, all right, because they took forever. And uh, you know, okay, fine. I won't use them again if it's like if it bothers people that much. It's just the NIFB is like a gold mine for material, right? So again, if people want to contribute to the James Two documentary, give more scripts. I can yeah. carry on working on it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, well, I don't know if there's anything else you want. I mean, the thing is, like you know, I I just I don't know. Like, I wasn't there. Um, you know, it's one thing if like the testimonies don't add up, but there, there were some things that like they all added up. Like, um, mm, yeah, they've all mentioned uh, is Isaac having a dint in his head because he got thrown at a concrete yeah. thing. And like, all they have to do is just bring him to the front of the church, tip his head forward and show everybody. Like, that would be quite an easy thing to prove. But I don't know how much of the videos uh, Stephen actually watched because, again, because they got interviewed by a tranny, he wouldn't watch them. Um, so maybe he's just done away. But I think all three of them brought that up. I think what I found... A Bit, I'm not very good at these psychoanalyst things, but like um, John was saying that his relationship with his dad was fairly good, and the worst bits were his mother. So like it was almost like she was the tyrant from the kid's perspective. But then when Miriam was speaking, more of the emphasis was on the father, not the mother. And she she said some things like that the mother had said to her some really horrible stuff, but she seemed more intent on stuff that he did not what she did which i found quite odd like if the mother was a tyrant and the father wasn't so much she would have you know you know you'd expect that like miriam would have done the same thing as john and focus more on that i think that was the one thing mm. i found particularly odd but i'm not very good at this psychoanalyst stuff yeah i mean look i have my own opinions on um which we won't go into now about uh behavioral science uh, and so on and so on but uh i'm not saying there's nothing in it but like I, i'm always careful about when people of the world are saying this is how th- this is and this is and that is um so yeah it's not to, to totally ignore something um but yeah i'm, I'm one for analytics but it has to be like anything it has to be through a biblical lens um but absolutely, the, all the story, like I say, going back to the point I made, if it was a court case, all this stuff stacks up neatly, 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 and it, it's a slam dunker. And, like, for, for me, for any, well, I'm sure a lot of people are not going to know this, but uh, Susanna Anderson, you know, the Bible says that we shouldn't eat blood, you know, drink blood, eat, and, and, and obviously eat human flesh and so on and so on, um, and the witchcraft around eating one's own umbilical cord. Um, yeah, but is that actually true though? Like, does anybody know that for certain? Well, we we well again. Um, all I'm saying is is just to, just to just to give the obviously audience some idea of what has been stated uh, by prominent 
IFB um, people in the past. This is on the videos, obviously not on here. So I'd, I, again, I'm not going to go and dig it all out, but you can go and obviously research uh, that for yourself. Um, all I'm getting at is like, you know, when to quote Anderson himself, when, you know, birds of a further flock together and so on. And it's like, we see all these things and that age old, you know, worldly saying, but, you know, the people who scream about stuff the loudest generally are involved in something. And so what we've learned about certain things with beads and, and so on and so on. Um, and, you know, there is potentially what his brother hasn't said, which, Again, the stuff gonna come out. I'm sure off his brother. Yeah, well, um, Solomon comes out and says something about it. Oh. Yeah, and and all the stuff that even going back to it, which again everybody can research the videos. Uh, uh, Jeff Dollar in particular has a lot of this stuff about the uh, Jack Hiles College, where it was an open sexual hangout for everything, where Anderson went, and so on and so on. You know, and and again, no matter what people have done, if there's anybody who's unsaved watching this or people who are saved and may have been involved or whatever. Look, what you have to remember is that, like, you're a new creation. You're a man. You're saved. If you're not saved, I encourage you to get saved. But God knows, if you think of it from this perspective, when Jesus came down sat with the public, with a harlot, you know, the harlots, the publicans, and so on and so on and so on, he didn't go for the religious people, did he? Because they don't need a saviour. We need to understand how bad we are. You know, we are described ultimately as filthy rags. So when one, think of it this way, when one, say, filthy nappy says, hey, I'm not so much as a filthy nappy as you because I have less crap. Do you how ridiculous that sounds, right? That's sorry, folks. That's the best thing I can come up with right now off the top of my head. But this is how ludicrous and childlike level, no pun intended, what we're dealing with. I think as well, like, for people, like, that mighty, like, when you're so well-known and you've been, you know, so... Oh, yeah. Like, oh, the only way is down then, isn't it? Whereas, yeah. at least because we don't ever get to that pedestal, there's not not as much of a fall for us. Uh, yeah. It's easy and to stay be- out of the line, like, because Satan hasn't necessarily got a big giant target on our back, like yeah. he would for somebody in that position. And can I just say as well, if Jason Robinson gets to see this, two things, Jason. One, kudos for separating yourself. Uh, and two, please turn from that reprobate doctrine. Um, but we can have that chat another day. Um, but yeah, um, and also just on the back of that, anybody else who I think at this stage should disassociate themselves even just for a while um, and review everything that's happening, and um yeah i think the hardest thing is like we're so desperate for like a good ifp face ripping church over here you know it's just, you know what it's like over here right and then like just over there they just keep dividing themselves in half all the time yeah. <laughs> and just like yeah. infighting all the time i know they need an american scent here yeah um so yeah because the the fanboys down in south end um i don't know if they've made a video defending them yet I haven't heard anything from them, but I suppose that they're not as well known, are they? Um, no, it's um, English, but, so nobody cares. But, <laughs> yeah, um, because because the, the only reason I mention that is because like what you tend to see is with a lot of and remember, remember folks as well. When I say Andersonites, there are different categories. You know, uh, some you know the Bible says it's better to to trust God rather than men and don't lift up men especially as idols. And so when I see people dressing like him, talking like him, speaking the same mannerisms and so on, that tells me everything I need to know. You know, that's very easy discernment. And so um, there's going to, you know, there are other people there who maybe aren't like that. Obviously, they're probably the vast majority of people, obviously, I'm saying that aren't like that. But yeah, it genuinely, it doesn't have to be American, of course, but yeah, it could do with a face rip in church. And, and I... And I think there's a careful balance with um, uh, how we, sh- you know, I'm not saying people are mildly placid all the time. That isn't a bad thing. But like, you know, again, like the Bible says, some say with compassion, some say with fear, right? I like to think we all can maybe have a hybrid of that. But like, I definitely am in favor of 
some pastors face ripping every now and again and to and to give credit where credit's due when anderson used to rip um you know a lot of doctrine i learned when i was younger um when he used to rip on Sluder and all these people and rip Calvinism apart and all these things and, and pre-trip, so commendable. Can upset by saying pre-trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have some pre-trip friends, by the way. So yeah, me Doesn't, too. I'm sure I'm I have pre-trip subscribers, but after the tribulation, Matthew twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The day of the Lord day. <laughs> um, but the secret thing that Paul says in some other passage that's got nothing to do with it, that one, the mystery, oh, that's, well, well, case closed then, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, that's actually one we can, de- that's, sorry, just while I remember on that, that is one we haven't really touched upon, which is definitely in the queue at some point to do, and it's just purely going to be focused on post-trib versus pre-trib and the nonsense of the pre-tribulation rapture. Easy target. Easy, very easy stuff. Um, you know, uh, but I know some brilliant people who know the Bible very, very well. Um, potentially going to be serving under one of them soon, and I'm sure he'll, he'll, he'll be musing and having a little laugh when he sees this. Um, but uh, I'll keep you informed down the line about that. But, yeah, I mean, look, is is like, is like, I think to people... Um, you know, as, as long as we um, try and have a good rapport with people and 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 get them saved, that anything else other than that is is just pure bonus. Um, but yeah, I think we've covered everything tonight. Yeah. Well-